Sunday's special, Spending Money with Andreas. Great YouTubers, here is the guy with the Swiss accent, with a new episode and fresh ideas around sensors and microcontrollers. Many of my viewers have a love-hate relationship with mailbags. Therefore, a word of warning. Continue watching this video can get expensive. Always wait at least one night before pressing the order button, unless you decide to do it differently, of course. So let's start the show. Here is a small one. Chinese packaging, hard to open. These are AD620 instrumentation amplifiers, op operational amplifiers. And uh, I plan to do a tutorial about amplifiers and filters and maybe they will end up in this video. Next one. Also small chips and you see already HT7833. This is a tip from uh, one of my viewers. This is nothing spectacular, but they are the big brother of the HT7333 I used quite often in my project. They support 500 milliampere instead of 300 milliampere. They have more or less the same size, I think. So um, maybe I will use these more than the 7333 chips. The next one is a little bit bigger. Two boxes. Let's open one because both are the same. And these are small modules from TTGO. Now I was not very happy with the old TTGO stuff. This is why I ordered the new version. The new version is different. The Wi-Fi antenna is here. It's no more close to the pins. And it has a module, a LoRa module on it and no more just, no more just the chips. So uh, this should be much better. It's also battery operated as an SD card. They are not cheap. But I like the concept or I started to like the concept because they have everything on board which is necessary, battery, uh, display and uh, the LoRa module. Now this is a, a little bit special because they are not 868, they are 433 modules and I wanted also to test once the 433 modules, I do not have any so far. That's why I ordered. And you always have to have two, of course, because they have to work on the same frequency. And we also get a small antenna with it. We will test also the antenna if it really resonates on 433. This one is from DHL. A Fire Beetle LoRa. 915 megahertz but I think they do not have a different one we will check it out on 868 if it works this one here is the one from TTGO and in re it resonates at roughly 360 megahertz which is completely unusable uh, for the purpose because on 433 we have an SWR of more than 3.5, which is useless. And the one from, uh, from the Fire Beetle, it should resonate on 915. And, and it is roughly at uh, 920, depends a little bit where I place the antenna. But definitely this is okay. This is usable for 9.15 as uh, described. So you see the quality difference. They supply an antenna which works as expected and uh, the TTGO just deliver whatever, I cannot say it, antenna, whatever wire they want. Next one is quite heavy. 
a mechanical part to hold PCBs. Maybe we find a PCB somewhere. For example, a small board like that. They have some slots here which fit a normal PCB with 1.6 millimeters and they are very well fixed here. They don't move and this is not really heavy but it's for sure it stays on the table and it has also some rubber here, oh, quite good rubber here. Like that you can easily solder the things. Now let's check a big one, this one here. And for this you have to go to the maximum supported size. But still it works. So to solder even this quite big PCB, at least for my lab here, usually I do not have bigger PCBs than, than these, uh, to solder, they, this is okay. The only thing is you cannot turn them. Some other PCB holders you can turn them to solder, for example, through holes. This is not uh, possible here because it's blocked here, but for SMD work quite useful, I think. Next one. Energy Harvester, LTC 3588. A small chip, a small inductor, and a capacitor. Well, maybe a second capacitor. What's this? This is a nano power energy harvesting power supply and it is made, it is a buck converter which can use very low um, voltages and it is made for piezoelectric, solar or magnetic trans transducers. It has a quiescent current of 450 nano ampere and it has various different features to really squeeze out every electron from low energy devices. For example, it waits till it starts its buck converter till it has enough energy. It should be possible to use very small solar panels or maybe even other things. I just wanted to experiment with this once. It has a selectable output voltage of 1.8 to 3.6 volt. Maybe it's already made for 3.3 volt. I do not remember. Next one. TF Mini. Something with light and obviously a microprocessor. This is a rangefinder sensor for drones and it has a operating range up till 12 meters which is quite a lot and the angle is very small compared to the 30 degrees plus minus of a, for example a um, ultrasonic sensor and it is serial connection and what is very interesting is the frequency is 100 Hertz. Now, uh, this is not a cheap module, but compared to the others uh, available, this is half the price, I think. And this is why I thought I'll try it out. And if I find some documentation, it could be an interesting thing. Next one. This is a nice assortment of short heat shrink tubes in all colors from very thin to quite large. The next one here but it's not an ESP8266 it is a Atmega chip. It is a nano and Arduino Nano but in a completely different form and it has a lot of 
pins here. I like the pins like that. It's ground, VCC, and then the pin itself. So for experimenting, this is a quite a handy format and it's not very big. There is a serial to USB converter and there is a 5 volt regulator. This one here is a similar one. There is one difference, however. Here we have a serial to USB adapter on the board and here we do not have this adapter. The rest seems to be more or less the same, also 7 to 16 volt input capabilities. Next one. This is the replacement for my temperature sensor on my Aldi oven. The sensor here, which is a very simple design. The only thing it has is two different metals welded together. They create a voltage which is somehow proportional to the temperature. And they can be used uh, to quite high temperatures and I think to about minus 50 degrees. And they are quite accurate. This is also a very simple principle. One pin is a little bit wider, so you cannot in insert it the wrong way. 25 degrees centigrade. And it's also quite fast in reaction, obviously. I just uh, put it, I heat it with warm air from my mouth. Simple and cheap, but it works. Fortunately, it is so simple because the manual is somehow a little bit difficult to read, for me at least. Next one. Ah, oh, my nice switches. I ordered new ones because I used quite a few of them for my reminder project. This reminds me on the questionnaire or the poll I did and uh, it was a clear winner. The Itty Bitty Inky Blinky Wife Happiness Machinery. Machini, 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 probably. With 170 votes and only 50, around 50 or even 40 uh, votes for the rest. We had 315 participants, but we had also some comments where people said maybe this the itty bitty inky blinky wife happiness machinery or machini is probably too long. At least uh, on my machini it would not work. Even on the 8 push button um, machini it would probably be too long. So this was uh, the poll of, for the name of the device. And here I can build now many other devices. This one is a big one and it was opened by our customs. But so far they had no problem with it. These are fake brother tapes for my printer. These are 24 millimeters. I like these if I want to print uh, large letters and so on. And here I have smaller ones. This is a green tape and uh, this is a clear tape and I think I have also some black or white which is the normal thing I do. Next one, very well packaged. Very nice 5 volt 4 ampere power supplies from 220 volts or also from 110 volts. These are used for my LoRa gateway project where I need 5 volt for the Raspberry Pi. Probably not 4 ampere, but um, usually I do not recommend to use the Chinese specifications to the fullest. So um, 4 ampere is okay for a Raspberry Pi for sure. The next one is quite heavy. 
first these cables, SMA cables, very short to connect something, but they are quite interesting cables here. They are so-called se semi-rigid and they can be bent in all directions if you do not bend them too much, otherwise they are destroyed as all RF coax cables. These can be used, for example, to connect a antenna to a device or what I plan is to cut them in half because to solder these SMA connectors is not easy by hand. So I bought them soldered and I cut them here, for example, if I want to create my own antenna. Then I have a, an open coax cable here and I can um, build my own antenna. And still I have on the other side a properly soldered SMA connector. Next one. Interesting packaging. This one, the big one. It is a selection of different things and I bought it because of these connectors. Now I have every, I hope at least, every possible connector which exists and I do not need to care about which one I need. And uh, I just take one and it should work like that. So I have only one cable plus a adapter which fits. This one here of course is another ESP32 board. This time it's really breadboard friendly. If you compare just with this one which is still breadboard friendly, this is the one I killed and this is even smaller. But of course it has no battery management on it. It's just a pure development board. One for my collection. This one here is another ESP32 board for my comparison with boards with display. It also has a battery connector and the rest seems to be quite standard with two buttons here. And it has no FCC certification here. <laughs> it comes with a heatsink. This is the first ESP32 board which comes with a heatsink. And here I have a 433 module. This is just a TTL uh, connector via 433 to extend a TTL connection. And I wanted to check once these small boards without a lot of processor processing power and stuff. You just connect RX and TX and it's done. And this one is for my hobby because I like to cycle. And this one helps. It's a very innovative concept in my opinion. It, they are Bluetooth headphones and they are switched on and off like that. They are magnetic here. Now they are off and, and like that they are on. They fit extremely well in my ears and uh, the wind noise is acceptable even if I go quite fast. Next one. SIM 7000. This is the entry into a new generation of mobile communication, at least for me. This is a SIM 7000E for Europe and it is a fourth, a 4G module. Here we have to enter a SIM card, I assume, and then we should be able to use it for communication with our mobile networks here in Switzerland. And of course we need also an antenna with it and uh, I for sure will check it. It's an interesting concept here because these modules send on I think quad bands which means four different frequencies and the antenna should be capable to resonate on all these four bands. I am really interested if this works here. 
Next one. I think you can imagine what this is. It is a third or a fourth or a fifth or a sixth hand. Viewers, remember that I built one on my own with a big lead plate. I even poured the lead myself. It is very good, but since I have now an assistant, we sometimes have to fight for this tool because this is used every day uh, se several times. So I decided to buy a new one because I had also lots of critics when I poured this lead. And uh, now this one is aluminium and uh, seems to be healthier for me. I will assemble it and show you how it works. There is even a small fan with it, with a USB connector. You see, it takes away the fume here. Let's quickly compare it with my own design and we see major differences. One is they have some heat shrink tubing around these crocodile clips. Maybe I have to add them here too because they are probably a little bit better for the PCBs. Second thing is I had to use hot glue to glue in the crocodile clips. And here they have a nice way to do that. It's nicer. And it has, of course, more than just the two one, the, the two arms. Maybe it's a little bit an overkill to have six, but uh, still four or so would be okay for me. It's not as heavy as my lead one, of course, but it's heavy enough. Oh, so here I have to find maybe a different solution. A nice addition to the workshop. I want to thank all my supporters on Patreon and those viewers who use my affiliate links for their orders. Especially mailbags are expensive because I buy all products to be independent from suppliers. Bye!